r slash ask reddit by ready reddit. What is your ha ha ha? Oh wait your serious moment. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Enjoy the video. An intern at the vet I work at was a very 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 sheltered Mormon. He came to work one day panicked. He had his first kiss the night before, asked the girl to marry him, and was concerned about his wedding date. He was absolutely convinced that he got her pregnant by kissing her. Absolutely convinced. It took me a long time to register what he was panicked about because it sounded so absurd. He'd delivered hundreds of kittens and puppies by then. I just thought he had also learned about human reproductive anatomy as well as animals by then. Reminds me of middle school. My friends and I grew up sheltered Christians. I was the least sheltered, as my parents still believed in science and dinosaurs and my sex ed talk with them was informative and normal, and featured all of the scientifically appropriate names for genitals and whatnot. They didn't want me to have sex, but they did me the decency of explaining how it worked, and that it wasn't bad. It was for people who had made a strong commitment to one another, and was fun, when you did it, right and were being smart. I didn't realize how lucky I was till a friend of mine, panicked, asked me at lunch if it was true that a guy could get you pregnant through your genes. Insert my ha ha wait what moment while she explains that she snuck out last night with a boy and they had a heated makeout sesh which involved some heavy petting. Her mom had given her the talk and had told her you could get pregnant even if both partners were wearing clothes. To this day I don't know if her mom was that sheltered as well, or if this was a malicious way to keep her daughter from ducking around, but I have never forgotten what seemed to my 14 year old self as a great betrayal of trust between parent and child. And anyway, that'd be why she snuck out. If she had a normal mom she could just introduce her to her boyfriend. <laughs> Yesterday my mother called to tell me that she thinks I have the coronavirus. I have seasonal allergies and no symptoms related to the virus, by the way. She then proceeded to tell me that scientists discovered the virus cannot live over 133 degrees Fahrenheit. At first I got excited that a breakthrough had been made and thought maybe I missed the news announcement. Then she said yeah. So they are saying, if you plug in a head rear and keep breathing in the hot air it will kill the virus and you will be fine. I immediately started cracking up because I thought she had made a joke. Then she got very offended and said it was a real scientific video she saw on Facebook. Facepalm. When I came back from lunch at work to find that one of the soft drink vendors, because at grocery stores they stock their own product, our stockers don't, loaded the pallets wrong and a tower of pallets fell, spilling soda slash tea slash glass everywhere. The boss, store manager, just so happened to walk into the back room at the same time, looked at me, and was like you saw it, you're cleaning it up. Thinking he was joking as he liked to do, I laughed it off. That's when he looked me dead in the eye and said no, I mean you're really cleaning it up, because that's your job. Insert me spending the rest of my shift cleaning it up, and my department head constantly calling me over intercom and getting yelled at and then written up the very next day because I didn't do my duties in addition to cleaning up that epic mess. Getting fired later that year was one of the best things to happen to me. <laughs> Years back I dated a girl who would like compulsively about random things. The first big example I went to her place, she'd just got Assassin's Creed for the first time and was really getting into the story. Like a week later she was telling me how she just discovered her family were related to assassins from Florence. I thought it was a joke, but turns out she was serious, had changed her surname to something Italian on Facebook, and had already spread the lie about on social media. In my head I was like I literally watched you play Assassin's Creed last week, but she was gorgeous, way out of my league, so I put up with this and other crazy crap for another 6 months before I gave up. I want more stories. I got a sinus infection once and was prescribed nasal spray. Was at hers one night and was like excuse me btw I have to use this nasal spray thing. I got it to my nose and she screamed no. Slapped it out my hand and was nearly crying. Said how her mum used it the year before and the spray went straight to her brain and nearly killed her. Now I dk about that one. But it seemed to me that nobody ever explained to her that your nostrils aren't a straight passage to the brain as most kids believe. Another time told me her mum was a famous model in New York in the 70s. Looked it up 
and couldn't find any proof. Also her mum never mentioned it. Told me once she wrote a novel when she was 8 about fairies and it was nearly published. No idea what that means. The list goes on man. I was so smitten and just surprised that she was into me though I put up with it all like it's fine I don't mind. A previous coworker of mine went on a fiddish minute tirade about how much he hated me. To my face. While at work. In front of 10 other people. Including our boss. Up until that point I had never met someone who had disliked me so strongly. At least no one who said anything about it. So I thought he was joking for the first minute or so. I stood there with this incredulous grin on my face. Until he paused for breath. And one of my other coworkers asked. If he was serious. He said duck yeah I'm being serious. And started accusing me of being racist, disrespectful, and of favoritism. None of which were true. That quickly wiped the grin off my face. And I stood there dumbfounded until my boss came over. And told him to stop talking. And to walk away. Everyone stood around kinda shell shocked for a bit. Before we laughed it off. No one knew where it had come from. And he spent the rest of his time there trying to convince everyone else. That I was evil, but they all ignored him. I'm extremely grateful for that. He could have made that job a complete hellhole. I used to work at a funeral home that did a yearly Christmas celebration. It was super nice. We'd invite all the families we had served that year for a mass and coffee after. And they'd get a lovely metal snowflake with their deceased loved one's name on it. The whole point was about not spending the first Christmas after a loss alone. So it was run by staff volunteering their time and I figured hey let's help this year. There was probably about 250 people there. And boy did they make a mess of the reception hall. Hundreds of plates and cups to be washed. Coffee spills. Cake crumbs. Food everywhere. Not to mention the bathrooms. Chapel. Hallways. Lobby. And entrance needed to be cleaned. No biggie. I'm part time surplus staff for receptions anyway so this is things I've dealt with before. Plus there's like 30 of us. Once the reception was over and everyone went home, my manager congratulated all of us and said since we did such a good job, the salaried employees could go home and the part-time staff could clean everything up. I was the only part-time staff member. Of course I laughed and pointed out I was the only part-time staff there. My manager proceeded to laugh and then said oh I'm sure you don't mind. Alright everyone let's go, and I'll see you all when the holidays end. Only one salary employee stayed behind to help me clean. My mother's former coworker who took pity on me, and it took us about 6 hours to clean everything. I never volunteered to help with the Christmas gathering again. This probably isn't as dramatic or interesting, but last year I took my car in, to get brakes done to this guy who was very highly recommended. He was busy that day, and said he wouldn't get to it for a couple hours, but considering his price I thought it was fair. Part of his service was to drive me home, so I wouldn't have to wait in his tiny waiting area forever. So we are in this car in our way to my complex and this guy is chatting about how, back home, his dog he inherited from his father just died, and his daughter was taking it real hard, because she really did love the old guy. But maybe they'll get a new dog a little down the road and maybe we should go out on a date sometime. The offer just came out of left field so suddenly and randomly I actually laughed. Thinking he was kidding. He just looked at me all serious and I realized he wasn't. I just stuttered some lame excuse about focusing on school. He was like that makes sense. Gotta get smart and stuff. Super awkward car ride after that. He was super insistent. After dropping me off he would come to pick me up when he was done, but I just told him no, and had my friends go with me to pick up my car. I'm a grade 3 teacher. One of the students I got this year had a reputation for causing a tantrum when things didn't go his way. However, I had built a degree of rapport with him early on, so he hadn't shown much of that behavior throughout the year at this point. We played bingo one day and I promised the winner a small incentive the following day to which he won. I had to call in sick and schedule supply the next day. The supply called me at the end of the day and told me one of my students flew into a rage, trashed the classroom and the trophy cases in the hallway, and broke his glasses by throwing a chair at his face. The supply I called was a friend back in teacher's college, so I thought he was joking. He was not. Last time I play bingo without a prize immediately ready. A definite learning experience. Thank you for watching Ready Reddit. 
don't forget to like and subscribe for more r slash ask reddit videos. Share your stories in the comment section below.